I see young moms sometimes with the house full of kids or the car full of kids or the basket full of kids as they're going through the grocery store and they're reaching for everything and they're grabbing everything and it's like one mom against four or five kids and there's like two arms against ten arms and honestly I don't know how they do it they just they seem overwhelmed and yet somehow in control I for me it's a a day or two with the grandkids two or three or four of them and I'm I'm overwhelmed trying to keep this one out of that and this one out of that and keep no you can't eat that and put that down and stop playing with it and don't do that to the dog it just seems like it never stops it's overwhelming and I know especially for entrepreneurs sometimes business seems exactly the same way I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast. Do you ever feel like it's the finances over here, it's the sales production over here, it's the got to get this task done and there's nobody to help with it and I've got to get this one done because nobody else can do it and, and all of a sudden life just overwhelms you. Maybe you've heard that phrase, leadership is lonely at the top. Or maybe you've heard the phrase, a quarter of three strands isn't easily broken. Or when two travel together, they're better off because if one falls in a pit, the other one can help them out. See, these are all principles that say life does get overwhelming when you're all alone. And unfortunately, a lot of times people choose to be alone. Why would you choose to be alone, especially if you're running an organization or leading a family or building a team? The answer is simple and it's sad. Most people choose to be alone because they don't want to share the success and the glory. Do you hear that? Most people choose to be alone. Maybe not even consciously, maybe subconsciously. Maybe they thought, well, I was building a team, but so-and-so wanted to get too much of the glory. Or I was building a team, but they wanted too many shares or I was building a team, but I couldn't get anybody to really do the hard work with me. Or worse, I couldn't get anybody to do the hard work for me. See, one of the challenges with leadership is that in order to gain buy-in, people have to trust the leader first. Before the project, before the goals, before the attained success, they have to trust the leader. And building that trust means being willing to give something away. You've got to be able to trust other people for them to trust you. You've got to respect other people for them to respect you. You want people on your team who have the same dream that you have. They're sold out to the same goals that you're sold out to. They see the same investment and they're willing to make it. But what all of them are requesting on the other end is that they also have some share in the success. See, there's, a, there's a challenge in our society today that kind of fascinates me, and that is the idea that employees who work for a company see themselves as themselves against the company. They have this perception that if the boss is making a lot of money and I'm not making a lot of money, it's us against them. And part of the reason for that is because for so many years, decades, maybe even centuries, leaders who've launched an organization, who've created a business and hired people to do the work in the background, have been unwilling to share their profits, their success, their achievements, their wins with anybody else. And that's how they choose to be alone. Not because they woke up one day and said, <clears throat> nope, 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 nope. I don't want anybody to go with me. Nope, 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 nope. I can handle it all by myself. Nope, nobody else in my way. That's, that's not usually what happens. What usually happens is that the leader says, I can succeed at this and I'm going to come hell or high water. No matter what, I'm going to succeed at this. And they'll see people who will come along and run alongside them for a while with the same kind of passion, the same kind of vision, the same dream, the same goals, especially if this is a, a movement that takes a lot of people along with it because the idea is good and the solution is powerful in changing society or the world or saving lives or saving natural resources. 
People love to get behind things like that. But when, when the leader decides that the only success will be held by them, that the greatest paychecks, the greatest profits, the greatest vacations, the greatest vacation homes, the greatest retirement plan only goes to them, the team starts to disband. It's a little disheartening to invest your soul in someone else's success. If you want to lead a team where you have buy-in, don't try to do it alone. Lead together. Sure, give them the dream, give them the vision, give them an opportunity to be a part of that, but give them an opportunity to be a part of the success as well. And you will build a team that will fight together. I'm Jay Lauren Norris for Leading Leaders Podcast on Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day.